Hi, my name is Robin Bremer, and today I'm going to share with you something that is really important. And um, I'm going to—I'd like to share with you how to pray for somebody when you're going to visit them in the hospital. And I would suggest that you uh, subscribe to my YouTube account or my GodTube account, um, and then when you go to the hospital to visit friends or have an emergency, um, you can just um, click on this prayer and um, say it for your friend or I can say it for your friend where they can hold the phone to their ear where you they can hear the video on YouTube or GodTube. Uh, because oftentimes we go to visit people in the hospital and we all we do is feel sorry for them and we bring in a spirit of pity but not power. So I'm going to share a little bit on how to pray for somebody in the emergency room in the ICU or just visiting in the hospital. First of all, when you go into the hospital, um, some of you might notice as soon as you step into the door that a spirit of fear would try to jump on to you because the spirit of fear is hanging around at the hospital waiting to attach itself to anybody it can and it's so strong there people come into the hospital with a spirit of fear attached to them because they believe they're going to die or going to be in pain or going to have some kind of loss. So when you go to the hospital, the first thing that you want to do is um, bind the spirit of fear and tell it it can't get on you. You want to bind the spirit of fear and the spirit of death off of uh, the person you're going in to pray for. Now you might not want to do that in front of them because when you bind the spirit of death in front of them it might give cause the fear to grow and think that they're going to die and they get more fear. So you might want to do that before you get to their room or quietly under your breath. Um, or if, if they already know they're dying, you might want to be bold and just step right in there and say, in Jesus' name, I command the spirit of fear and death to be gone off of whoever their, whatever the name is. Um, usually, I've gotten, um, let me share some experiences of being in the hospital. I remember years ago, I went to the hospital um, one particular time I prayed for somebody and I practically got kicked out, or actually I did get kicked out by family members because they were religious Christians. They weren't, I don't know if they were saved or not, but they were religious. And their big thing that they said was, um, we don't want you giving them any hope. No hope. So in other words, they were saying Jesus couldn't do any, uh, the doctors couldn't do anything about it, so Jesus can't do anything about it. So the biggest thing um, that you're going to come against in hospitals is family members being critical, judgmental, and religious because their faith is not at the same place your faith level is and they're going to be offended actually they're not offended it's a spirit behind them it's a religious spirit religious spirits get really angry when somebody who ha who knows the authority and the dominion and the power of Jesus and the blood of Jesus the name of Jesus and that it's in them and that they can change someone's future and walk in that confidence the the religious spirits are going to get offensive they're going to get angry and they're going to get mad so, oops, so that's one thing that you're going to have to be prepared for. And don't get offended. It's not worth getting offended. It, it's just like when you know that you know that you know something and someone else just doesn't know it, you can't get mad at them because they just don't know it yet. And you were at that same place at one time. I know I fought years and years and years a religious spirit to get where I'm at. And that's one of the reasons that I wrote my book, Feed My People Joy, Kingdom Living for End Times, is because of that religious spirit that's on the church that keeps them following the Ten Commandments and being good people but having no power, no presence of God, and having no changes in their life. Um, okay, so the religious spirit, you want to bind a religious spirit as you're going into, into, the, the, into the hospital, a spirit of fear, a spirit of death, and a religious spirit. And you want to make sure that you go in with the motivation to walk in love and if you get kicked out of a room, be polite. And as you're going out of the room, um, it, it, I always like to try to touch the person, it, whether I'm raising them, trying to raise them from the dead, or I'm going to heal them, or uh, I like to touch them if I can, even if it's their toe. And I'm probably got a reputation <laughs> for touching people's toes um, when they're slain on the floor in the spirit, and I pray for them. I usually grab them by their feet. <laughs> I don't know why, and pray for them. But you're gonna have to deal with that you know, that religious spirit of family members. If you can get in there without family members, if they're not Christian, ask for a moment of privacy or to talk to that person privately or something. 
okay, uh, where you can go with a team member, a prayer team member, and pray with them. Uh, so because of that religious spirit that's going to try to block your way. And don't let that stop you, especially if it's a matter of life and death situation. Um, know who you are and go in there in power and authority, but in humbleness. Uh, I've had other experiences um, several times where I left a note or a, a player where they could play worship music and somebody who was offended came in the room, turned it off, it disappeared, never saw it again, and that's happened to me, I believe, twice. Um, worship music is really important. If you can take worship music, especially worship music that that person is familiar with, uh, and play it by the bedside, make sure you ask the nurses if that's okay, or teaching tapes or teaching CDs or MP3 player um, that will, can they can hear the word. Um, you can turn on TV, uh, Christian station, but a lot of that is religion. It's not talking about power and dominion. It's talking about how sinful you are and how you have to always repent. It's not going to give them confidence to walk in power and authority and raise up from a deathbed. Uh, when you go into a hospital <clears throat> um, or to somebody's home, um, I've been in people's homes when ambulances are come or came or they've already died and I was in their home. Um, you, you, you know, you have to deal with that religious spirit. You have to be courteous. You know, you, you have to use um, love. Okay, so let's go on to how I would pray in certain situations in the hospital. For number one thing that I would do when I, I um, approach and come into the room, you know, I'd, I'd ask the nurse, you know, what room it is and if I could talk to them and see if there were family members in there and talk politely with family members and then ask for if I was bold enough for uh, a time when I could, you know, have some privacy. I generally would take their hand or their foot. Um, depending on how I'm led by the Holy Spirit, and it's different every time. Um, I would be worshiping on the way up to the hospital room, praising and worshiping, or talking about the Word. I would not uh, be getting into private conversations. That my focus is to to get my mind focused on the goodness of God and the power of God um, before I got there. When I was in the room, uh, like I said, I usually bind the spirit of fear and the spirit of death and um, take authority over it. I pull down that stronghold in Jesus name and I would uh, speak to their body oftentimes the Holy Spirit has me pray um, I speak peace to this body because when they're in emergency room ICU their body is in competing with each other their body is fighting 